Just as I got out of the bath and was heading to my room, I noticed light seeping out of the living room. Sagrasan, why are you still up? Oh, you can't go. Wait. Wait, has everything just gone back to normal, more or less? Because they were staying over for a while, but it felt like that just kind of... Like, the switch between that didn't even feel like a switch at all. It just kind of... It was like... Whatever. It's bad for your health if you stay up too late. Sakura-san smiled, but she looked pretty tired. Sakura-san, have you lost weight? You look a bit pale, too. Sakura-san was kidding around, but she really did seem exhausted. I just know that she's overdoing it. You should finish up your work quickly and get a good night's sleep, okay? When you keep pushing yourself, you end up not being able to do anything at all. Letting out her usual laugh, Sakura-san started cleaning up the papers she had put on the katatsu. She pretended to sip from a cup as she said that. Tea, uh, I don't really feel like tea right now. She was acting like a spoiled little kid. Jeez, I know she isn't a kid, but that childish smile really suits her. Man, the principal really shouldn't have to take advice about staying up late from a student, you know? Yeah. Is Yoshiki the sick? Is he like similar to the protagonist of the first Dark Apo? That was like Junichi also incredibly oblivious and dense? Or is like. Or was he different? Because if he's this dense, then my god, that is just ridiculous. Sagrasan sighed and let out a weird little laugh. <laughs> you mean Janichi san? Well, that's because it's the classic kind of protagonist look, you see. You know, black hair and blue or brown eyes. It's always the same, you know. <laughs> Are you saying I'm lazy? Mm -hmm. She confirmed it with a smile. It's not like I set out to be that way, though. But it's true that I really don't like studying. <laughs> she tried to smooth it over, but I couldn't really tell if she was being serious or not. Alright. I am really no match for Sucker Sun. I got up from the Katatsu and headed for the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Sucker Sun was speaking more like her regular self now, so I was a bit relieved. You didn't even get to have the conversation on screen! I could use someone wishing for something. Oh come on, it didn't even voice act! I wish my love for Senpai could be mutual. I know he has a girlfriend, but I just can't give up. Isn't there any way to make him love me? I know I shouldn't be wishing for stuff like this, but... She continued declaring her wish. I met him just a little too late, but I've always loved Senpai with all my heart. Is this one of the case of... Senpai won't notice you kind of thing? that I tend to hear about joked over the internet a lot. Why did she get to him first? Will Senpai never look my way again? 
I, I love him so much. Why does she have to be the one by send by side? Why couldn't it have been voice acted? To feelings and desires people hide deep within their hearts show themselves when they dream. Jealousy and envy are but far too small desires, yet as they slowly build up, they give shape to twisted dreams. Every single person is aware of that, but despite that knowledge, they can't go on without wishing. And because they don't know, it becomes too much to bear. You know, with how dense Yoshiki is, this is how his dreams would usually look, isn't it? Just blank. Well, not necessarily. We have seen one of his dreams, but... Yeah, I... I couldn't shake the feeling even after I had left the dream world. I had this weird feeling of pressure on me, like I was being captured by something. It's a Pokeball! For some reason, I don't feel in control of my body. Maybe I'm back in the dream world again. Wait. As I regained consciousness, I could gradually feel something warm and soft pressing against my body. It smells really good. And it's really soft. Ah, uh, is it Otne? Wait, why is Otne sleeping in my bed? When I tried to separate our bodies, she just hugged me even tighter, I couldn't move at all. Otne, wake up! She showed no signs of waking up even though I was talking to her. She looked really happy while sleeping too. I'll really be held captive if this keeps up. Okay then. Poke! I poked Sotney's cheek with my finger. She wiggled her head a bit in her sleep. Poke! 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 Pokemon! If it's ticklish, then wake up already. Come on! But Nay blinked her eyes sleepily and looked straight at me. Yeah, I'm awake, all right, Otne. What are you doing? She couldn't have decided to become my hugging billow all of a sudden, right? How does one go into someone's room to wake them up and then suddenly end up sleeping next to them? How's that work? And then you fell asleep? She let out a deceiving little laugh. She always reacts really strongly to prevent it's up and yet she lets her guard down like this. Well, there's no point in bringing it up right now. Thanks to her, I woke up quite properly. Well, should we get up then? They shall get up. Next time. Or oh, maybe now. Let me check how we've done. 45 minutes? You can get your ass up right now, then! I sat up and cracked my neck around a bit. But I sat up as well, right next to me. Suddenly I realized that we were in the same bed wrapped up in the same sheets. They always say that, don't they, newlyweds? But Ney was thinking the same thing as me, and she blushed. Suddenly it felt like a waste to get out of bed. But Ney seemed to think the same thing, so she just sat there. So, should we eat breakfast? Mm. Alright then, should we get out of bed? But so, <sighs> leaned herself against my shoulder. I could feel Aunt Ney's warmth and traces of her heartbeat. Her hair smelled sweetly of shampoo. I'm feeling really happy right now. And then he fell asleep. In the end, we went back down to, went down to have breakfast, but that was after an hour or so. An hour or so?
While I was lazy in the bed in front of the TV, you may start talking to me. Hmm, let's see. Didn't really have any plans for what about the investigation? Otone hasn't said anything about it. Just like, sorry, you may, but it's not your time to be in the spotlight for the plot, so piss off. No, I hadn't really planned that, but. That's the only reason they ever invite him shopping, isn't it? It's just like, not because we want your company or anything, we just want someone to, you know, carry all the stuff. Hmm. Oh well, it can't hurt to hang out with Yume once in a while. I should probably go tell up, mate. But you said that about Wataru as well, and they end up getting cancelled. So yeah, is it okay if I go shop with Yume? The jealousy on her face is showing! Well, it might seem like I've been ignoring her ever since I started dating you. You've been ignoring everyone since you've started dating Yoshiki. It happens every damn time. Doesn't matter who it is that he ends up with, he completely ignores the rest of the cast of characters almost entirely as a result. I haven't really thought much about Yume lately. I forgot she even existed. But yeah, have you... well, I certainly haven't. I've still got her glare as my freaking wallpaper background on my laptop. But yeah, if you come across something interesting about the instance, give me a call on the cell. Is there anything else you're wondering about? Well, that's what they tend to do, isn't it? They just go shopping, shopping, and shopping, and shopping, and... Oh yes, shopping. But name mumbled that while looking like she didn't really understand why. Hey, are you jealous? Alright then, everything's okay. Please take care of the house while we're gone then. Jealousy on her face. Yeah, no problem. You may seem to be in a hurry, so I went to the shop district. She kept looking at the clothes she was holding in front of her. Aren't they both just as good? If you can't decide, then why don't you buy both? Mm, well, yeah, she's my girlfriend after all. Eh, uh, uh, what is it? Yeah, well, of course. Yume hung her head looking a little lonely. I could barely hear it since she was mumbling. Having said that, Yume looked at me with her regular expression again. That's not her regular expression, her regular expression is a glare, usually. Yume bombarded me with questions for almost an hour. Well, we didn't actually get to see, you know, so... Well, if Yoshiki is the one who's deciding, we don't have any choices in the plot anymore. Well, for this route, we finally seem to decide on which one to buy. You brought me along to carry all your stuff, seeing how heavy it'd be, but you've only bought a sweater. Well, that's... That commonly tends to happen, it's just like, I remember one time it's just like, well, just wandering around shop district area kind of thing with my sister and she'd be like, zoning onto a shop, just like, just like, should I buy this? But 
half an hour later, didn't buy anything, left the shop. Just like, what the hell is that all about? Next time, you're going to make me carry your stuff again, huh? Uh, shut up, don't make fun of me. Marriage, huh? Well, that's definitely possible. The future seems so far off that I can't really consider exactly what I should do. By the way, I don't think I'll ever meet someone who understands me as well as Otme. Hmm, do you just say so? Alright, see you later. Having said that, you may quickly run off. I wonder what I should do. I don't feel like heading home quite yet. I could feel a piercing stare on my back, so I turned around. I saw a huge pink ribbon sticking out from the side of a building. Somehow, I thought I saw a silhouette that looked like Otne. Maybe I imagined it. Why would Otne be hiding from me anyway? Usually, she just call out to me. Oh, gee, don't think she's uh, stalking or anything just to see what you were up to. Oh, well, never mind. Yeah, I shouldn't worry about it because, you know, you're dense. Never mind, never mind. Huh? Isn't that... Turning around, I saw Nanaka and Coco hanging out together. Booby, huh? Was it good? Oh, what do you see? They kept going on about the movie and all the stuff that had happened in it. It kind of felt like I had already seen the movie myself just from listening to these two. Nanaka suddenly interrupted herself in the middle of the conversation. Coco looked like she was terrified by something. They both seemed to be looking at someone behind me. Hmm, what's wrong? When I turned around to check, there was nothing behind me. My god. Is it what I think? Hmm? They sure are acting weird. I waved at Nanaka and Coco as they seemingly ran away from the shopping district. Hmm, I wonder what was up with those two. Eh? Suddenly I could feel a bloodthirsty stare piercing my back again and I quickly turned around. My god, she has learnt an advanced glare that even Yume could not possibly get. I saw someone's shadow slipping into hiding behind a telephone pole. I could see someone wearing a pink ribbon hiding behind it. Can't hide behind something like that. Um, this is I'm not entirely sure, but it's Rotne, right? Also, I could swear that she's staring at me. Wow, well, glaring. I must be imagining things here. Yeah, that must be it. <laughs> is he gonna run into everyone and just like be glared at each time? Just like you're not allowed to hang out with any of your school friends anymore. No whispers would be like that, of course I was surprised. It's been a long time since we've seen you lot. This time it was Anzu and Amikaze who showed up. I uh, sure I'm running into a bunch of people today. I'm uh, not feeling guilty or anything, I was just surprised because he snuck up on me from behind. Huh? 
Ah, you mean that bloodthirsty thing from... Look here, the two of us don't really have that kind of relationship, okay? Ah, who has their eyes on me? Hey, wait, do you whisper in my ear like that on purpose? Oh, see what you did there, Anzu now. I had a bit of dense moment myself there, but yep, yeah, I see it now. Just like, she sees that Otne is spying on them and just like, I'm going to spice this up and try to make it look a bit suggestive. So just like, increase the jealousy. After saying what they wanted to, they walked away. The one who has her eye on me, could it be it's Otne, right? No way! Even if it is, I haven't done anything to feel guilty about. It's okay, I'm pretty sure that something small like that can put a dent in our relationship. They're just friends of mine, oh, they already know that. Well... You... Well... It's kind of... It's just like I was about to say, you... Well, you've not been in a relationship before, but it technically has, but... In all the other relationships, has anything like this even happened? But maybe I should explain the circumstances to her anyways. Clearing up this misunderstanding and fast is probably for the best. Thinking that, I went over to the telephone pole where Otne was hiding and carefully looked behind it. Uh -uh. Okay then. Ah! Even though Otne was smiling, I could still sense that she was angry. It's like, you know they are to talk to other girls, you see, kid. I will just smash your face into the ground! Uh, today, your facial expression is matching what you're saying. No, wait, not, I'm pretty sure you are misunderstanding. It doesn't matter, Oshirki, if it's misunderstanding or not. She'll never see it that way. Uh, wait, we're going the same way, so let's at least... Yotne stomped her feet as hard as she angrily walked away. This is bad, she's angry, she's totally pissed off. Well, I'm glad that she's jealous and stuff, but... I wonder what I should do. Did Otne say anything about it? Oh man. She's really angry. What? Well, maybe for him being so damn dense as to not realize, but he did realize that it could be a misunderstanding. I mean, it was Anzu kind of just trolling him as she usually does, you know? Hey, don't decide on things when you don't know the circumstances. I met Naka and Koko. Then I met Anzu and Amkaz as well and talked to them for a little bit. You may let out an incredibly long sigh. Yeah. Hey now, you're making it sound like I was some kind of sex maniac. I just shared a few words with them. It's not like I had any impure thoughts. Even if you say that, they're my friends. I can't just ignore them, can I? Not really sure if I can avoid ever talking to a single girl except Otte. Eh? Hey, <laughs> your words resound of wisdom. Have you also been jealous of someone? Gee! Mm, your 
reaction tells me that you have somebody you like, who would that be? Gee! God damn, the denseness is just... Oh. But why are you staring at me? You're right, it's going to be a right bit of phones like this. Mm, she probably won't listen to me if I try to talk to her. Which leaves me with... Maybe I should make Salisbury sticks. She said hamburger, but he said steaks. Is there a translation error there or what? Well, I won't know until I've tried. Where's that ground beef? Otne had a grim look on her face as so she looked at the hamburger stick. Okay, so it is. Well, what's wrong, Otne? I thought you really liked hamburger steaks. Great, eat as much as you like. There's enough for seconds as well. Atne puffed up her cheeks as she started cutting off a piece of the hamburger stick. That's right, you like mushrooms too, don't you, Atne? That's what she said, but she just kept eating more pieces of the steak. Ah, you like it? I found some interest in spices, so I decided to experiment a bit. If you like, I can give you the recipe later. Coming right up. Well, we've known each other for a long time. I'm pretty good at guessing which person is depressed by now. Even so, I was pretty surprised when she got that jealous earlier today. You know what? Let's put this into a different perspective. So, Otne is talking to someone like, say, Tsunami or Wataru. Just like they're talking, but Yoshiki is in the background. He can't actually understand a word they're saying. And they're kind of like standing pretty close together when speaking. How would that make him feel? Jealous, indeed. Yeah, I got it. All right, where's Sakura-san? She's skipping dinner? That's not good. Her condition's just going to keep de uh, deteriorating. They're giving her a hamburger stick. Probably isn't going to improve said condition very much either. I'll go make some rice porridge for Sakura-san, so you two just take it easy and enjoy dinner. Uh, don't worry about it, it won't take long. I quickly made some porridge and brought it to Sakura-san's room. Sakura-san, are you awake? I've got some porridge for you, so I'm coming in. Sakura-san sat up on her bed and gave me a weak smile. Ah, oh, you don't have to get up, you're not feeling well, are you? <laughs> Did you take some medicine? Seeing that while being sick in bed is not very convincing, why do you need to take tomorrow off and go to the hospital for a checkup? Have we ever seen that facial expression before? Come on, don't be so childish. Uh, 
バイしすぎ<笑>大丈夫ちょっと休めばすぐに元気になるから She keeps saying that, but Sakura-san's physical condition has really gone downhill since New Year's. I'm just worried that she might be pushing herself too hard. Okay, how's this? You get plenty of rest today, and if you're still not feeling well tomorrow, you'll go to the hospital. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Sakura-san. <sighs> Sakura-san nodded reluctantly. <sighs> I'm just worried. Yeah, of course, you're like family to me, Sakura san. That's right. Sakura san stared at me for a bit in amazement and then she smiled. She pointed at herself and looked really happy when she said that. Uh, my mother, huh? But she looked way younger than me, so I'm not so sure about this. <laughs> Can you imagine that in public, really, when you think about it? Yes, like, kind of introducing themselves, just like, So is this your little sister? No, she's my mother. What? Why are you cheering me on about this, Agrasan? No matter how I looked at this, she just didn't feel like a mother. She was more like an older sister, nope, probably younger. As she was sitting there right in front of me, her eyes sparkling, that's exactly what it felt like. But if I said that, she'd probably get angry. Ah, uh, sorry, I'll hold back on that. <laughs> it's embarrassing, also... No matter how I look at it, you're more like an older sister. As she said that, she smiled happily. Oh, and if you're going to keep talking, your porridge will get cold. You should eat your food and get some rest. If you're still sick tomorrow, go to the hospital, okay? Otherwise, I won't be responsible for what happens. She picked up a spoonful of porridge from the bowl and put it in her mouth. Judging from how vigorously she ate the porridge, it seemed like she was already feeling better. I really hope that was the case. Click, 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 click. I somehow doubt he actually said that. Click, 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 click. I could hear the familiar sound of someone typing on a keyboard. Ah, this is the same dreamer as the other night. Whose dream is this anyways? <sighs> Seriously, Ashiki. Come on! Figure it out already! It's not like I haven't seen dreams from the same people more than once, but it's rare for it to be this frequent. Is it just coincidence? Damn it, Joshi, okay, seriously, I want to smack you over the head and just be like, Thank you, idiot! Or maybe there's some sort of deeper meaning to this dream. One thing that I'm getting from these sequences is a kind of idea for... Well, I won't really go into detail about it, because... Who knows, when it actually reveals what the truth is, I'll, like I said, I'll state what 
what I fought and see how it holds up compared to what actually happens. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, yes. Hmm. The dreamer seemed satisfied and got up from her chair to stretch her body. <laughs> As she looked at the moment, her eyes looked doubtful. Looks like it's almost morning again. The dream would start well started to crack apart and my surroundings turned white. Man, that DJ gives zero fucks, man. He's just like, <laughs> oh, fuck. He probably does, actually. He's just like, <laughs> oh, shit, there goes my job. I started waking up as the radio was switched off. As I heard the loud noise coming from downstairs, I instantly left the dream world. Beep! That's not my alarm clock. Could this sound be the smoke alarm? What's going on? What's going on? Cliffhanger. That's what's going on. I'll see you next time, news. See you next time.